Hi, this is Ariel at Homeschool Together Podcast, and today we're going to be talking about how we use Trello to plan Blossom and Root, which is a terrific digital curriculum. Uh, we've been using that for our preschooler. Now we're going to talk today about the second volume of Blossom and Root. So the first volume is for ages um, two to two to four, maybe two and a half to four, and this is uh, ages four to five. We're just about complete with our daughter with this curriculum, and I wanted to show you how I went about planning it in Trello. So if you haven't heard a lot about Trello, you can check out our other videos on how we use it for homeschool planning. We also did a terrific podcast episode about this, um, and you can find links down in the description. So let's get started. This is the sample that comes online from Blossom and Root, and I'm just going to look here at the very first week which is what's provided in the sample. I don't want to show anything but that because I really want to respect the content creator. Christina has done a fantastic job on this curriculum uh, and we love it. So we highly recommend that you check it out. So the first thing that you'll see when you get into Blossom and Root, she has a, a whole week plan here and everything that you would do during the week. I'm going to skip over that for the moment. This is actually planning exactly what days things would be done. And I'm talking more about setting up the board for the whole year. So when I first got this curriculum, I went to each and every week and I set up a list in Trello that had all the activities. And I want to really show that to you. And then we'll talk about how I would uh, sparse it out through the week. So I'm going to just pass by this for just a moment and get down here into the meat. Now, one thing, if you are a, a current Blossom and Root family, you might notice this looks a little bit different. Uh, she has just recently made an update. There's a revised edition at the end of 2020 that had a few uh, changes in literature and composers and, and things and art. Um, I planned with the old version. It doesn't really matter which one you use, but just so you know why mine might look a little bit different than what you've received. So let's start off. The first thing that she has here is a composer study. So we're going to start off with Beethoven. So what I've done here is I have created a week one list and I have one of these for every week of the curriculum. And I went ahead and made a card here about Beethoven. And as you can see, I was able to pull in a picture of him so we can kind of get an idea who we're dealing with. Um, I went ahead and was able to copy the language right out of the curriculum into the description here. If you've listened to our podcast, you know that my husband is the main educator and I am the main planner. This is a way for me to take what's in the curriculum and put it into something that he can pull up on his phone and quickly and easily go through the tasks. So I want to make sure that everything in the curriculum is included in Trello. I don't want to leave anything out because he's not going to be referring to the original version of the curriculum. So here I've got the notes she, she gives about how to, how to listen. And, uh, as we go through continuing weeks in the composers, she'll, uh, start bringing in some other pieces of information from the poet, from the composer's biography. And she'll be asking questions and, you know, having you do thought exercises around that. So whatever it is for the, for that week, I've copied that into the section here. And then I went out onto YouTube and I grabbed a, a bunch of great snippets of his work so that when my husband is doing the homeschool planning, he doesn't have to stop and try to find something. And because we study Beethoven for multiple weeks in a row, this is another great thing that I can do, which is ensure that every week is a little something a little bit different. So we're not just going back to the same ode to joy over and over again, uh, as amazing as it is. So this is awesome. He can click right from Trello. If he clicks this, it will bring up a YouTube video. Boom. So super easy. And he can just have this on the iPad and bring it up and we can, she can listen to it in the background while she's doing art or something else. So super great. The next thing here is a picture study. So of Renoir, the study of the swing. So I was able to go ahead and create a card. I found a terrific picture of this from Wikipedia, and I was actually able to grab a high res image of this, which is really great. Um, if we, if he hooks up his phone or the iPad to our TV in our homeschool room, he could actually bring this up in almost life size. It's a giant TV. So that's just a great way. He doesn't have to go out and look for the painting. I've done all that work in advance. And when you do a bunch of these weeks and plan them all together, you can go out and just snap up every picture that you need right in one go. It's a lot easier than trying to find it in the moment. I've also put in here the the description of what we should be doing each time we look at this. So this would be planned for, and, and Beethoven too, 
both planned for multiple times during the week. Now I'm not going to create three different cards just because I have three sessions of this. I know that that's the way that this is structured. And so when I do go and I copy this into a board that I have called this week, I will copy this entire list in and then I will move these cards around as easily as I want and say what day I want to do things on. And I can just as easily go here to, and say copy, click create, and it's going to make a copy directly below the one that I just have. Now I have two copies and I can do this and make two and three copies of things and move them throughout the week so that it's a reminder to, to my husband that we're going to be talking about Beethoven multiple times this week. So don't forget to keep listening. Just because you listened one day um, doesn't mean that we want to continue. We don't want to continue listening, right? We want to follow what the curriculum says. So, so that's how we do our picture study. And then one part of Blossom and Root is this kitchen classroom. And this is pretty open-ended, right? It says choose a recipe and, you know, let your child help you in the preparation of that recipe. So I started to think about, you know, gosh, I don't want to come up with a complex recipe every week. Um, that's not my goal. My goal with my preschooler is to get her comfortable in the kitchen comfortable using the utensils and getting to help out, but I also wanted to teach her some practical skills. So when I create kitchen classroom um, activities, I tried to think about things that I thought would be helpful to her um, as far as not just an experience, but a skill that she could take forward. So the first week I had her peel some carrots and she's got a little uh, kid knife that she was able to cut up these carrots and add other vegetables. And then I helped her to whip up a ranch dressing. And then she had to arrange the, the tray. This was a just a really practical exercise for her. So every week for Kitchen Classroom, I try to put in things like making a grilled cheese sandwich or um, making yourself um, you know, making a yogurt and granola mix or just easy things because this is preschool. I want her to be engaged, but I don't want to take on so much each week that it's overwhelming for me. And I want her to walk away with skills that she can use. And I have to say, you know, we started this last summer and we are just about finished with this curriculum. And at this point, my daughter has a lot of kitchen skills. She's perfectly capable of making herself lunch every day. And I think the kitchen classroom and this emphasis on in the curriculum every week of doing that really helped her to be able to um, get to that level of skill that she can be independent in making her own breakfast and lunch, which is really great for mom and dad. So the next thing we have here, exploring artistic impression, which is an activity where you're going to do something that usually loosely relates to the picture study, sometimes in the same medium that the artist used or similar themes. So uh, this has got a great list of materials and how we prepare and then what we do. I was able to just take that and add it all right here. I don't have to look back through the, the curriculum. I have everything where I need it. This is just the description I was able to copy paste. So really terrific. We get down to the next page. So reading and writing readiness. This is all as it's the first week it starts at letter A. Well, for us, our daughter was in two day a week preschool and they were on a different letter uh, place than she was when we started this curriculum. They weren't aligned. This is one of the fantastic things about Trello. For me, our daughter is learn would be learning the letter N the week that the we would be doing A in Blossom and Root. And we didn't want to confuse her. We didn't want to um, do one thing at home and one thing at preschool. We thought that would just be difficult. So it was great. I was able to skip ahead to where we talk about the letter N and I was able to make these lessons and copy in just what we needed. This is a terrific way, right? So if we were using this as a paper curriculum, then we would have to go, oh, we're not on A, flip, 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 flip. Let's get to the right one. Then let's go to N and then go back. And this just complicated. This is great. I was able to do it right up front and plan out exactly how our weeks were gonna, we're going to um, gonna go. So I love that about Trello. I was able to put in all my lessons. And then we have our read together time. So we're gonna read the tale of Peter Rabbit and do an activity. And then there's some poetry. So here I've added in tale of Peter Rabbit and I've got a great cover image so that my husband can easily find it on the bookshelf. We have a read together activity. Now this is open-ended. This is that we would reread the book for the week and then come up with some sort of a fun game, art activity, or other that just enhances what, what we read. 
So we've got a note for that. And then the poetry and all of the poetry is actually available on a website and they link this in Blossom and Root. So I was able to link this and say exactly what poems we need to read. Super easy. As we go down, the next thing is early math foundations. Now for our daughter, we actually are doing right start math, so we don't need this part of it. So I was able to leave this out of the curriculum entirely. I have a different board in Trello for right start, and I use that instead. And I don't have to skip over this or get confused or feel like I missed out on something. I know what I'm doing for math and I can just move on because I have my list here. Our STEM activity, or sink or float with household items and looking at how tall you are. Again, I just pulled in all of the information. So I've got this all here, including the nature studies and all of the information. By the time I'm done with this, every week that goes by, there is absolutely no need to open the original curriculum because everything I need is right in Trello and we can use it to um, move things around, to change things. I can switch books. As you notice here, when I first started planning my full weeks, I went ahead and did a literature checklist so that I could make sure that either I had all the literature or that I could get it all from the library, which was super helpful. The other thing I did is as I went through the planning, I took a, just a brief look at where we started and all the books that were going to be needed each week and did they, did they line up? So we didn't start this in the fall. We started it in the spring. And because of that, this all of this didn't line up exactly right. So there's a moment where we're going to be reading about snow and doing some snow nature studies, and that wasn't going to work well where it was at. No problem. I just went ahead and switched it. So you can see I made a note to myself about where to switch. And I did this with other things where, you know, clearly the curriculum, because this is a nature-based, um, a more nature-focused curriculum, I should say, there's a lot of bringing in what would be seasonal and that didn't always align with exactly where we were. Just like the letter thing, I said, no problem. And I went and I switched it for a different week and said, this is gonna be more appropriate without having to cross anything out in the original curriculum or make any confusion. I just did it all in Trello. So my entire week went in there. And then at the end, because we're reading Peter Rabbit, we happen to have the Peter Rabbit movie. I was able to put a picture of that and just remind us that we should watch that movie to go with it. So that's our entire week planned for Blossom and Root. I did this for all 36 weeks of the curriculum. When it's time for me to use it, I go ahead, I go here, I copy the list and give it a moment to populate. There we are. And then I will say move this list and I will select this week and I'll move it just like that. So I've retained my original plan. I'm not losing this. And when I go over to my this week board, I have Monday through Friday there, and I'm able to take each one of these cards and move it to whichever day I want. Now, if I want a little bit of guidance, I can go up and I can look at, you know, the way that they, they had planned, but the reason that I didn't use this in my list is because things are repeated and I didn't want this list to get long because I have three insta instances of Beethoven and three of Renoir and multiple of this. I just didn't want to do that. So I felt like this was simpler and then I can look at our week and say, gosh, we're really busy on Tuesday. I'm going to move all this stuff over here to Monday and Wednesday and, and I can play with it, whatever works best for our family. So I hope that this was helpful. It just gives you a little insight into how you can take this digital curriculum, put it right into Trello and customize it to make it work right for your family. So thanks very much for joining me.